will help us to have your mind and your eyes and your heart for your people you said father that you sought for a man and lord we agree with Isaiah tonight we say here am I God lord I will go for you God I will go for you anybody make that confession tonight tell them Lord I go for you uh, Lord I go for you I go for you Lord where you want me to go whatever you want me to do whatever you want me to say God I go for you if you lead me to the fiery furnace I go for you if you lead me on the mountaintop God I go I go I go I go for you, Lord. No matter who identifies me with or separates me from, God, I go for you. Thank you for giving us this word tonight to remind us of your mercies, which is new every morning. For we confess, we know that your mercy endureth forever. You've instructed us to do likewise that the same mercy we have received from you so we give so help us to have a heart of compassion help us Lord to see as you see and do as you do God we can't do it without you Father we need you we need you we need you God in the name of Jesus and all that agree let us say amen and amen come on let's give God a good hand of praise hallelujah God, we love you, Lord. We love you. We love you. We love you. Amen. Amen. While having your seat, open up your Bibles with me to the book of Romans. The book of Romans chapter number eight. Um, those of you that did not get an opportunity to come out to our SWAT conference on last Friday with Bishop Darrell Shaw, and I would compel you or I am instructing you uh, to get that CD. If you have a desire uh, to be what God has called you to be and to do what God has called you to do, then that is a, like they say, some is must see TV. You know, that is a must hear for the believers. Amen. Um, he done a wonderful job of just really talking to us. I think, I believe that, you know, when, when you invite someone to come into your house that's really full of the Spirit of God, uh, they should not come preaching another gospel. Amen. They should be uh, confirming and speaking to what has already been said. And so he did a lot of that. He really talked about um, a lot of things and the things that I loved about it he met us right where we are amen he he walked in our living room looked up under the bedroom he looked up under the bed went into our closets amen told us to clean up them dishes amen yeah he did a wonderful wonderful job but you know sometimes um, you know it takes that it takes someone to come in um, that you don't know um, that you know what I mean? I didn't, I didn't talk to him before. As a matter of fact, I didn't even talked to him before he even got here. When we got here, it was our first time speaking. So I didn't tell him nothing about y'all business. I know y'all was walking out of here talking about pastor and told that man about what's going on in my life. No, I ain't told him anything. Amen. Amen. He, he just came in through the power of the Holy Ghost and read our mail and read it good. Hallelujah. But if you did not get that CD, I would like for you to get it. But tonight, I want to talk about a subject that he dealt with because I think that some things need to be rehearsed in our hearing. Amen? And, um, and one of the things that I thought that was really important um, for this house, particularly talking about um, the season um, that we are in, um, the thing that, that I think that, that you know, he said a whole lot, but the thing that really stuck out to me uh, was when he was dealing with the harvest. And uh, he talked about how um, the harvest was ready, but there are few laborers. And then he began to deal with that 
um, from a point of view of saying that the harvest is waiting for the sons. Amen. And until we become the sons, we will be inexperienced laborers, therefore messing up the harvest. Amen. So I'm going to talk about that a little bit tonight, dealing with um, a little bit what it means to be a son of God. Amen. Amen. Romans chapter number 12. Um, Romans 8, chapter number 8. Uh, let's look at verse number 12. It says, therefore, brethren, we are debtors not uh, to the flesh to live after the flesh. For if you live after the flesh, you shall die. But if you, through the Spirit, say through the Spirit, if you through the Spirit do mortify or punish the deeds of the body, you shall live. For as many as are led by the Spirit of God, they are the sons of God. So we see a qualifier here. One of the things he talked about was, was we qualify to be laborers to reap the harvest. So we see a qualifier here, and we're going to talk about that a little bit tonight. But let me just read on for the sake of time. It says, For you have not received the spirit of bondage again to fear, but you have received the spirit of adoption, whereby we cry, Abba, Father. The spirit itself maketh, uh, beareth witness with our spirits that we are what? We are the children of God. If And if children, then heirs right heirs of God and what and joint heirs with Christ if so be that we suffer with him that we may also what glorified together father I thank you I pray tonight that you will anoint every ear and every heart to receive Lord what your spirit will say unto us tonight I yield before you now great teacher Holy Spirit take total control uh, touch every mind and every heart. Satan, I bind you. I come against your spirit that will try to steal the seed that is sown tonight. I render you ineffective and powerless right now in the name of Jesus. Now to God, I lift you on high and I say, come on in and speak to your children. In Jesus' name, we agree by saying amen. 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 You may have your seat. Amen. One of the things that we are uh, going to talk about tonight um, which I think is very important for us because he gave us a good clear message that we cannot be inexperienced laborers when it comes to reaping the harvest of God. And so if we are to be sons of God, if we are to uh, uh, be the sons of God that manifest the power of God, and then the question comes, how do I do that? Because we understand that in 1 John, that it says that he has, not in, in John chapter number 1, it says that he has already given us the power to become the sons of God, right? Which means you have the ability to be able to do that. When you receive Christ as your Lord and Savior, uh, you have the ability to become a son or a daughter uh, of God, amen? But that does not automatically make you into a son or for you to begin to walk into sonship. Because even though you become, you have the power uh, to become the children of God, you know, a child can be anywhere from one day old, amen, to 18, 19 years old, and sometimes 30 and 40 years old, amen. And so, you, so your age really don't determine whether or not you are uh, just a child or whether or not you are a son. And so when, when he began to use his scripture and began to talk about how that in verse number, look at verse number 19 for me. It says, for the earnest expectation um, of the creature waiteth for the manifestation, right? For the manifestation of the sons of God. And so I, I thought that was very interesting because he says that the harvest is ripe. It is ready, but it's waiting for something. It is waiting for laborers to come, and, but the laborers have to be the sons of God. Amen. They can't be the children of God. Amen. They can't be the toddlers of God. It have to be the sons of God. And so as he was beginning to deal with this, he says, now, some of the things you need to do to, to recognize whether or not you are a son. I um, mean, one of these things he was talking about that if you are scared of the devil and hell don't know your name, then you need to be on the altar. 
right? He talked about several things that, uh, which, which begin to gauge uh, for us to evaluate whether or not were we sons of God. Now, the interesting thing is, is when he was talking about being on the altar, he says, well, you need to be on the altar. What, what, what was he talking about? Um, he was talking about um, your, your, your private time with God. He was talking about you being filled with the spirit of God and walking in the power of God. Because you can be, you know, you, you can be a Christian for 10, 15 years and never walk in the spirit of God. You can, you can be a Christian for 10 or 15 years and, 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 and as the scripture declares that you can be one that live after the flesh. One of the things that a son does is a son lives in the spirit. He walks after the spirit so he do not fulfill or obey or run after the lust of his flesh. So, but the only way that you can do that and we have to tap back into uh, the teaching I was doing on Holy Ghost power. The only way that you can do that is through the power of the Holy Ghost. Right? You can't do it in and of yourself. You can't become a son by yourself. No matter how long you've been walking this thing, no matter how long you've been going to church, you can come in here and sit in here seven days a week if you want to, but that does not make you a son. Because until you spend your alone time with God until you allow the Holy Spirit to fill you so you are now being led by the Spirit of God. That is when you become a son or a daughter of God. It doesn't matter how old you are. It doesn't matter how long, how much theology you know. None of that matters. What matters is, is do you have a willing heart? and an obedient heart to follow the spirit now it's one thing to hear the spirit and it's a totally another thing to obey the spirit right a lot of people can hear the spirit but you don't become a son or a daughter until you obey the spirit right because the more you obey the spirit that means that you are being led by the spirit right because if the spirit tells you, um, you know, say you 